Today's episode of The Bitcoin Show is brought to you by Mt. Gox and the Thank You Economy book and CarpeVM.com. Hey, everybody. Welcome to The Bitcoin Show. Today, we have uh, uh, several things going on. So many things are going on. It's like crazy. We're taping several shows today, in fact. But one of the things we're going to do is we're going to start a new program we're calling the Bitcoin Fire Hydrant Free Money Giveaway. Okay. So get your, uh, your Android or your smartphone with the barcode reader ready and aim it at your screen if you're watching live uh, or even record it because if those people are watching live or too slow, you might, you might be able to pick this up even on the recording later. But anyway, get your scanner ready, aim it at the screen, and when you see a QR code, you're going to get free money. So we're going we're gonna to have a QR code displayed on the screen live, uh, which is going to be a Mt. Gox voucher code. And if you don't know how to redeem that, go to mtgox.com, create a free account if you don't have one already, and then you do uh, funding options, add funds, Mt. Gox redeemable code. You'll paste that redeemable code right into that box and hit redeem. If you also, if you have the app for Android, there's a redeem uh, code button right on there so you can scan it and hit redeem even faster and you'll beat the other guys. So whoever redeems it first, it can only be redeemed once but we're giving away free Bitcoin. We'll be doing that several times throughout the show, so keep watching, and we're gonna, this is a new feature we're gonna do every day. We're gonna give away Bitcoins every single day. So keep your phone aimed at the screen. You have to watch like this, all right? But anyway, uh, today's guest is Yifu Guo, uh, co-founder of Bitsincom, and we have major news about tablets. Tablets for everybody, but especially for Bitcoin, so hang in there. Back. Hey, <laughs> welcome. We're back. So uh, today's guest is Yifu Guo. Yifu, you there? Can you hear me? Yeah. What's happening? <laughs> What's happening? <laughs> Bitsincom, you did a presentation recently, right? Yeah, that is correct. Okay. So um, g g give us the, 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 uh, the executive summary. What was it about? <laughs> well, other than talking about, I'm going to skip over how our monetary system is terrible and how Bitcoin is the next big thing. But majorly, see, Bitcoin has a problem, and what that problem is, it's designed for a future that's not here quite yet. It's designed for a future where internet accessibility is widely available, and internet accessible devices are cheap. And, you know, a few months ago, I went to the Bitcoin conference here in New York and heard what everyone's working on and thought, well, the software will come, right? I mean, it has to, but what about the hardware? Like, if you're going to become a cashier at some restaurant, you got to learn how to use the cash register. And with that in mind, and I began my quest to find, and what I had encountered was that, well, there are cheap capital solutions over in China, and they're already now. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what, you, what do you think is the solution to that? Well, I feel that like it has to be compelling enough. I mean, like Am Amazon Kindle Fire just recently released, like you know, the the hundred ninety nine dollar reader that's been selling big. But I think that you could go even cheaper than that. Mm -hmm. And and what I found out is that we always knew that you know because China makes everything that it's definitely going to be cheaper over there. But the question is, how cheap was cheap? And I found out that well, you could get a very impressive spec of a tablet for fairly little amount of money, say under. 150 or maybe even under 150 dollars, mm -hmm. and that could you know facilitate as a point of sale system with a customized Android ROM, and it will be you know just good as for everybody. Right. Now, even if you're not into Bitcoins, I feel that these tablets are you know they they really sell themselves due to the fact that they're so cheap and versatile, and I feel that a lot of people will want one because that's what people need at the moment. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, switch over here to my screen, Ed. And I want to show you, this is uh, an article from Computer World. Actually, let me, just let me interrupt us just for one second and tell you that um, we just gave away some Bitcoins while you were talking. Uh, there was a QR code on your screen. And that giveaway was brought to you by Coinbits.com. Coinbits.com, Bitcoin News Bits. Check it out for all the latest news on Bitcoin. Anyway, if you were quick enough, you just got some Bitcoins. All right, so thanks to Coinbits.com. Now, back to this. Computer World article about tablets. They're talking about tablets priced under $100 with Android 4.0. You were saying uh, that's obviously it says in China. So it's under $100, maybe $99 if you're in China. 
But this, this technology, you know, delivered in the U.S., what is it going to cost? Well, I don't know. Shipping plus whatever the profit margin, you know, people want to do. And that's the thing. Like, if you, if you look at it, all corporations do is they, they are the middleman, essentially. Like, they don't make the stuff. They package it, they rebrand it, and they sell it to consumers like us. Mm -hmm. and, and in this whole, like, presentation, my, one of my points is to, to provide potential peer-to-peer. -peer. And, right. and that's one of the goals where you're removing all the middlemen. You're removing the corporations. You're removing, like, the, the redistributors. And you're going directly to the manufacturers, people with the things that you want. Like, mm -hmm. you need somebody's skill set or whatever. And the future where, you know, where, where banks are replaced by Bitcoins or by you and people like you, and you can pay everything and er, anything with Bitcoins, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. that's, that's what, essentially, we're trying to lead into this by building infrastructure. Okay, cool. Yeah, because so this goes hand in hand with what we're doing here. I'm I'm working on a thing we call uh, Bitcoin Promote, which is um, two things. One is liquidity, making it easier to buy Bitcoin and sell Bitcoin, and also the um, merchant services, which I call Bitcoin uh, BitcoinSolutions.com, where we're actually on Saturdays. There's a group of us volunteers who are going literally like going door to door, merchant to merchant. And, and selling them on the idea of accepting Bitcoin and why they should. We're going to try and build a community. Um, I was t telling you last night, we we're, we're going to try and, we're, I'll call it uh, Bitcoin Villages or something, but a community of neighborhood or neighborhoods of, um, um, that may have 10 or 20 or 30 or 50 businesses that, of all kinds of businesses that accept Bitcoin. And one of the challenges th that we have is that the cashier has to have internet access. They have to have an app, a browser, or whatever. At the very minimum, they have to have internet with a browser. And so that's where you guys come in with the, uh, this idea of a real lightweight, affordable tablet, and it has Wi-Fi, right? Or you can plug in a USB internet. Yeah, totally. I mean, mm -hmm. there's, and the cool thing about, about generic OEM-based tablets is that they have these extra features, such as like HDMI out and USB host, which essentially allows you to plug in USB devices such as a USB to Ethernet adapter or a mouse and keyboard or a USB hub and generally allow us to do a bunch of stuff because you know underlying Android is Linux. Mm -hmm. and Linux is quite Rock supportive solid. when it comes to things like that. Rock solid, reliable and support and um, free open source of course so it's very transparent you know what's going on you don't have to worry so much about viruses and things. Right, um, exactly. And speaking about connectivity and that's actually the second part and stage of of the, you know, the whole thing. We have, the presentation I gave on was on three technologies. One of them is the Bitcoin, the other one's the tablet. And the third one I quickly mentioned is the mesh net. Mesh the mesh net. net essentially is an ad hoc mesh, wireless mesh network that's gonna be owned and operated by the people and not the corporations. Mm -hmm. And effectively, and what a really interesting idea that has been talked about is the fact that when, when you join such tower network, there's gonna be a hosted Bitcoin wallet. And when you provide bandwidth to the mesh net, mm -hmm. Bitcoin come into your wallet. And when you leech bandwidth from the mesh net, Bitcoin trickles out of your wallet. And that creates like a whole self-sustaining ecosystem where you don't, like, you know, where bandwidth essentially becomes the value. Sure, and Bitcoin sure, facilitates right. that. And they're, they're both peer-to-peer -peer systems, so they work very well together. Mm -hmm. And I, I feel that that is the way of the future, especially yeah. the way we're progressing now. And that's another sector of the infrastructure. So the tablet solved the Bitcoin's problem of connectivity, and then the mesh net solves the tablet's problem of connectivity. Okay, right. And, and by, the, by bringing all these three things together, it's a pretty bright future. It's and a that's what we see here at Bitcoin.com. A synergistic environment, ecosystem, a bit sin, synergistic synergy. <laughs> so <laughs> the, uh, the mesh network, see, that, that had, was a new concept to me, that, but um, it makes perfect sense because everybody has excess bandwidth. You're, you're paying for that super speed uh, uh, internet access when you're not even home. And it's just being wasted, you know. So in a sense, it's just not being used. So uh, why not share it? And then while you're yeah. sharing it, you're actually l earning Bitcoin. And then whenever you use it, you, you know, use other people's access, then um, it costs a little bit. But probably you'll end up with more. Kind of like a ratio, a file sharing ratio on a peer-to-peer, -peer, like a BitTorrent uh, site or something like that, where it keeps score of how much you take and how much you give. And as long as you're giving at least as much as you're taking, you're all good. Right, precisely. Right. And okay. another thing is like load balancing. It's effectively load balancing the entire network. When mm -hmm. you're not using the internet, somebody else might be using it and vice right. versa. So, right. so like really, you know, you only maybe need one internet connection for whatever the radius block mm -hmm. a tower could cover. 
yeah. that would be okay. You don't have to like everybody, every household paying sixty nine ninety nine or even like nine ninety nine ninety nine for a month for just mm-hmm. the internet and maybe T television, which ironically runs on your internet line. So it's yeah. kinda like, you know, you don't need all these things. I know. And I right? feel that I feel that like a lot of people aren't aware and another problem we have with, you know, technology, technology has lack and people don't really understand that. Mm-hmm. And and I feel that if you want to get like learn Bitcoin properly or understand it, you have to understand the system that comes before it because every system is built on top of each other. Right. Like it's built on top of like, you know, the internet, the central banking and all this other stuff that sort of are the fabric of our society that we just kinda use and are very comfortable with but don't really don't get. It's like, you know, losing to house mortgages we never really understood it when we signed it and things like that happen. And I feel we should really be educated in the sense and that's what this whole, you know, the, another movement about this project is about. It's about transparency. It's about education and, and just bringing to everybody the data they need to understand what they're seeing. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Yeah. And then the mesh network makes so much sense because, like, there are, uh, you know, we're paying for internet at home and obviously we're not there all day, but there are other people that are there that could be using it. And meanwhile, we here at the office, we've got you know 35 megabit up and down through fiber and all that. But when we're not here, there are people, there are residences around here that could be using it, you know, or whatever. Right, so it, exactly. it makes so much more sense to uh, share like that. Yeah, limiting waste. It's very green. I mean, you know, right. So exactly. Totally cool. The only ones who are not going to like it are the uh, obviously the uh, <laughs> the ISPs. But that's right. the thing, you know, that that is the future. Mm-hmm. The future is where your internet providers and banks have been replaced by you and people are like yeah. That well, is this will drive the cost way. down. I feel, and it's I feel competition. The trust is much greater than the globalized economy, where you're not trusting a corporation, you're trusting an anonymous entity, you're trusting like your neighbor. Like you could, you could go out and have your drinks with your ISP you know, for all that I care. Mm-hmm. And I think you should. Like that's that's how you build communities. Good communities and good neighbors bring good things. Right. Okay? Right, and we and more competition is always better. We've got this problem of everything consolidating into, you know, five companies to two companies to one company right, and exactly, monopolies. Right. Antitrust laws don't really work. Yeah, it's really a problem. We need competition. So, all right. So back to the tab. I want to talk to the, about the tablet. Although that's really. Oh wait, one more thing about the the mesh network. So you're talking about um, a tower, and how how far does this signal reach? Is it Wi-Fi? Yeah, it's Wi-Fi. I mean, it it really depends on what the antenna we're using. But currently in the city, like if we're get we, I mean, we're really looking for places with high elevation. Mm-hmm. Especially in Manhattan, you're looking at like you know, twenty, forty feet of concrete, and that's not very good for a single reception, no matter where you are, how right. what what kind of antenna you use. Right. And but but in in theory, on a fairly open field, right? On a fairly open field, we're looking at maybe like five kilometers radius. Wow. Five miles, perhaps three to five miles. That's pretty good, and then maybe in twenty miles, point to point, or even higher than that, depending on what equipments that we're using. But they're fairly cheap now. It has, it has finally come to the point. Like a few years ago, before to do this, this would be practically impossible, simply because the cost would be, you know, enormous. But now mm-hmm. these commercialized thing has become cheap and mass manufactured in China again, mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. and so we could actually just buy them for maybe. Fifty to one hundred dollars, and they would they would suit our needs. And people that's not so technical could also just get these things and put them together and just join the mesh net. Like they could just contribute, which is a very so, nice peer to peer thing again. And that's why yeah. this is great. Do you need any kind of a license to broadcast that signal that far? Is that regulated well, anyway? I, I I really don't believe so because like we're running on the two point four gigahertz spectrum. Mm-hmm. And that that is like all commercial routers are licensed with that. Like they uh-huh. come with licenses. So it's mm-hmm. there's no laws stating that you, you can't have a mesh network, like have a wireless mm-hmm. network bigger than, you know, whatever miles. Mm-hmm. Because people have been trying to break that, like, you know, that there there are articles about people getting these huge array antennas trying to hit Wi Fi networks over like four hundred kilometers. If there's laws against that, I mean, then then I guess they wouldn't be, they doing, wouldn't it. be doing it, right? Okay. But maybe there will be laws against this if, if you know, if these big ISPs yeah. got enough lobbyists to do this stuff. If it gets abused, but, yeah. yeah. Okay, cool. That is something you have to worry about. That's interesting. Another fascinating, evolving technology like Bitcoin. Now, I want to talk about these tablets again. 
The, uh, bring this up on the screen, Ed. So this is, this is just a prototype example of one. But then, now these are tentative specs that you sent me, right? These are, um, you've got, if I can just read it out, processor is all winner, A10, one to, about one to one and a half gigahertz, right? Yeah, that's correct. GPU is Mali 400, uh, 512 megabytes of RAM, eight gigabytes flash, expansion memory up, uh, up to 32 gigabytes micro SD memory card. Uh, it's a seven inch screen. Flat touch, yeah. Mm -hmm. TFT. Wi Fi, G sensor. 800 by 480. Five mm -hmm. point touch. What's a five point touch? Five point touch is five point multi touch. Oh, okay. On the screen. Okay. You put your other hand, yeah. Okay. Yeah. G sensor, uh, Wi Fi 802.11b and G. Not N? Not N. But these, Not N. these are subject to change, right? These specs? No, well. See, the thing is, that's, that's what's currently available now because oh. uh, prototyping available, uh, availability is immediate, really. And mm -hmm. that's we're hoping to do a control group prototype project. Mm -hmm. Okay. okay. So these are the specs yeah. of the immediate prototype. And they're gonna, obviously, they're going to keep improving. You got, a front, you got a front and rear camera, right? Oh, wait, front point three. Um, yeah, the front is a PGA camera, and the back is a 2.0. 2 megapixel. Mm-hmm, yeah. on the back. Oh, you meant back. You said black, but you meant back. Um, OTG support, video output, mini HDMI. Wow. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, GP HDMI. And it's going ha to ultimately have Android 4.0. That's correct. It runs, it runs gingerbread, it runs honeycomb. It Even runs. the prototypes are going to have the ice cream sandwich? Yeah, I mean, I got it running on it, but it's, it's, it, it needs some work. Needs some work, okay. Yeah, it's, that's, it's coming. Coming that's soon. Like RSN, as we say, real soon now. Video 2160p, and the battery is 3200, what is that, microamps? 3.7 volts. Size and weight, so it's 350 grams is the weight. Yeah, it's about 170 grams, to be mm -hmm. honest. Seven inch screen. All right. I and, actually hated the thing because I'm just curious. Mm -hmm. And what's your best guess that this is going to start out at retail from you guys? Uh, I don't, I don't really know, depending on how much everybody else is going to be selling, because I know I'm not the only person who's getting access to this thing. Mm -hmm, but, mm -hmm. but I would say that it's going to be about more or less $150. That's what I'm aiming About like, more or less $150? Yeah. It's, okay. it's going to be less. It's either... $150 or less. It's not, not going to be more. <laughs> not more. And that's what about this project, is that like when, when I first talked to Roger, I remember he was about it, that whole thing is this project doesn't have a monetization aspect. It has a what? And to make a lot of money. Like, that's not worth it. It's not about making a lot of money. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. So it's, it's about bringing a... a thing out and providing infrastructure for future to come. Yeah. Okay. That's so your audio is breaking up a little bit, but let me re paraphrase what you said and see if I'm right. So what you're saying is it's not about trying to make a lot of money and get rich. It's about b bringing uh, a, a solid infrastructure to the, to the Bitcoin world and, and for everything. This is, a, this is an Android tablet that can be used for absolutely anything. It also, it just so happens that it's also the perfect tool for Bitcoin clients, Bitcoin apps, for point of sale, um, and, for accepting and really Bitcoin. the software is going to be designed for, you know, for Bitcoin experience in general. Right. Like, the ROM is going to be customized so that it has, it provides a very nice Bitcoin experience to the users. That's mm -hmm. our, another main goal when it comes to the software. So you're doing custom the, software to make right. the Bitcoin right. user experience really uh, For smooth. For most to customize the, the Android 4.0 ice cream sandwich. And easy. That is cool. How, how far along are you with that custom software? Well, I mean, I got the code and kernel book compiled, which is fine. It's, it's a matter of getting, like, Doing UI design really, it's mm -hmm. user experience is key, right? So we have the, I mean, like it, there's ob it has to be simple as one, two, three. It has to be a three click and go, right? Right. It has to be, you know, maybe perhaps the the home screen has to have these things such as QR codes, quick transactions, scanning, and all, and all these ideas that we sh that we're looking into and doing going to be doing user testing on. Right. Well, the, now the Mt. Gox mobile app for Android is already very easy to use. But uh, yeah, sure, of course, but you see. App, like mm -hmm. you know, it, it could be totally included on this this um, this tablet. And another thing is that, like over over at BitSyncom, we have a pet peeve, and that is not to introduce anybody to Bitcoins through a third party service. So we have to we have to include some kind of like client that natively downloads the blockchain or something, mm -hmm. whether it be a Bitcoin J based 
or you know, or Bitcoin JS based, or some some sort of system where it's like you are connected to the network. Mm -hmm. You are part of the peers directly. Yeah, well, it is your choice to choose Mongox Trader or any other exchange. That is not of our concern. Mm -hmm. Concern is do things first and provide things easy. Like you know, to give people the option rather than forcing them onto you know Mongox. And I, I, I'm not saying, and, and, and I do agree that Mongox is really easy to use, and I, perhaps it is the, currently the best you know mm -hmm. mobile application for Android out there. Mm -hmm. But it's not a native client. It's not. Us. It's not pure Bitcoin, right? So, do, what do you think? The I mean, I know you may you, you may not know the answer to this, but do you think that uh, or predict that the the main uh, official Bitcoin client will uh, come out with a an official version for Android? Mm, I, I say it's tough to say. Well, but it, either way, there are other developers doing no, it. Yeah, exactly. I mean, Bitcoin J is already full blown in Java, and it's very easy to port to Android. In fact, there are several people who have already done so. Mm -hmm. And I think, and and because those clients are also open source, I see no reason to support their development or simply use them because you know they work fine. Like such as yeah. the Bitcoin Wallet application on mm -hmm. Android Market currently. Mm -hmm. That's the open source Bitcoin J implementation, uh -huh. and it downloads the blockchain. I mean, it's a little bit slow because. The blockchain is, yeah. We deal with all those issues that's inherent in all of the network. But a lot of software people is, you know, solving that, such as Stefan Thomas, you know, mm -hmm. and everybody at the Bitcoin Consultancy, at my partner, my Google, you know, they're all looking, and a lot of the major Bitcoin developers they're looking into these software issues. Mm -hmm. Like I said, like software is going to come, right? But what about the hub? That's the path I chose to yeah. facilitate the infrastructure. Yeah. Well, this is brilliant so because it'll give have, users. When the software come, you know, I will be ready, or we mm -hmm. will be ready. For right. Because you have the platform. So this this will give users the hardware platform that they can they can use um, a, a full blown 100% uh, Bitcoin network client. They'll be able to use the Mt. Gox app and any other apps that come right, along. Precisely. We um, see no reason to reinvent and the Android market is perfectly for this. Mm -hmm. So and and the cool thing is that you know everybody already use Android. Android is not a new thing. We're yeah. not selling them a completely new, you know, ecosystem or right. an app sphere. They they could use all their old stuff on this just fine. Yeah. They could do their mail. They could browse. They could watch YouTube. This so they can do Angry Birds. This they, <laughs> good tablet that just so happens to run Bitcoin. Yeah, they'll get the and yeah. So it's basically just like a great big Android phone. They already know how to use it. They can use their Angry Birds and their uh, whatever it's called. You know. Uh, check in, whatever those apps are. Whatever apps they use already, they can they can, they can access the full Android market and buy apps just like any other Android device. Right? That is correct. They will have the full access to the market. Okay. I want one. I want one next cheap week. Cheap already, actually. Yeah. <laughs> I want my hands on one of these right away. And these are this is what we're going to use when we're going door to door to these businesses. We're going to show them if you don't already have a browser uh, near your cash register. This is it. You can use a tablet. You can just have it sitting there. You could even mount it on a bracket for security or whatever. Um, there's so many ways you could do it, and you could either do it through Wi-Fi or you could plug in a USB for your internet so that's you know locked down solid. Um, this, is, this seems like a really really slick way to to uh, to get into it uh, for point of sale as as you know something that they can use immediately right now today. But also for absolutely everybody who wants a tablet. I want a tablet just to watch movies in bed or whatever. Do your email, you know, on the bus, whatever. So um, everybody wants a tablet. It's just it's a Wi-Fi, ice cream sandwich, Android 4.0, you know, top of the line specs for less than 150 dollars, we'll say. So yeah. this this is brilliant. Okay, so t I've got to take a break right now, and we want to thank our sponsors, obviously, who bring us uh, to you every day. And did we do the second giveaway yet? We didn't. Okay, well let me know when we do. Uh, keep your Android phones or whatever you've got, even, even if you have an iPhone with a barcode scanner, you can scan the screen live and uh, then you take that code you're going to get and that's a Mt. Gox redeemable code. So you have to go to your Mt. Gox account, go add funds, add Mt. Gox redeemable code, paste it in and click redeem. And if you're the first one to redeem it, it's free money for you. Uh, just for watching, just for hanging out with us. So, and also be sure and send feedback. Um, you can send feedback to us live even while we're on the air, if you uh, send a message to feedback at onlyonetv.com. Okay, and maybe we'll get to your questions uh, while we're here. So, um, let's see. Do, 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 do. Um, okay, so we want to thank our sponsors. That's what we're doing. So, <laughs> first, obviously, Mt. Gox. 
Mt. Gox, M-T-G-O-X.com. I just had somebody call me like right before the show and say, I want to buy some Bitcoins. I said, well, set up an account on Mt. Gox, and we did that in two seconds. You just go to M-T-G-O-X, <laughs> yeah, M-T-G-O-X.com, Mt. Gox, we call it, and click the big green sign up button, and it literally takes two seconds to create an account, and you can uh, buy Bitcoins online from the comfort of your home or wherever you have a browser. Um, it's, it's very, very easy. And they have so many ways. They have like 26 plus currencies they deal with directly now. And um, so easy to get money in and out. And then um, uh, in many, many, many different ways. They have uh, the, obviously the vast majority of the market share, somewhere between 80, 90% uh, of the market share. And they uh, have this amazing uh, feature of the Mt. Gox redeemable code. If I have Mt. Gox and you have Mt. Gox, I can actually just send you this code and it, it immediately transfers either US dollars or Mt. Gox, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Bitcoin, directly into your account. See, as a Mt. Gox account holder, you have two balances. You have a Mt. Gox US dollars balance and a Bitcoin balance. So they're two separate things. So I can send you one or the other. And uh, let's see, what else? So they do charge very, very minimal fees and you can buy and sell Bitcoins anytime, anywhere in the world from the comfort of your own home. Many ways to get it in and out. Uh, and there are also other add-on services like bitinstant.com where you can go and uh, get money in there like within like an average of maybe 15 minutes, like crazy fast with a cash deposit and so on. So anyway, mountgox.com, we thank them for their support. And obviously, they're the creator of the Mt. Gox uh, mobile app for Android, which we've been talking about that's full-featured and amazing. So um, we thank them for their support. Also, the Thank You Economy book. Uh, ThankYouEconomyBook.com is where you can check it out. It's by uh, New York Times bestselling author Gary Vaynerchuk. And it's his new book about social media and how to use social media, how to do it right to promote your business, your brand, your whatever it is that you're doing, whatever it is that you want to promote, using social media and um, how, to, how to really leverage that power that's there to bring your customers to your business in an old-fashioned way of customer service like your grandparents used to experience from the corner store. A real personalized, hand-holding, excellent service kind of thing, not just spamming people. That's what most people do. They do it all wrong. And so um, it, it, gives, it teaches you how to leverage this new technology um, to bring back old-fashioned values and an excellent customer experience. And then not, you're not just selling stuff, you're building relationships with customers. So anyway, this is the Bible. Gary Vaynerchuk is brilliant. I mean, he's a young guy, but he's a genius. And um, this is his, his second uh, best-selling book. So check it out, thankyoueconomybook.com, and we thank them for their support of The Bitcoin Show, as well as Carpe Viem. Carpe Viem is C-A-R-P-E, vm.com carpevm.com video marketing web video marketing if you don't know anything about video and you you need you want to market something you have a website everybody does right and you want to create your own video to do a presentation to sell a product to to make a point to do a demonstration whatever it is uh, it's marketing right it's video marketing that's they're the experts carpevm uh, they accept bitcoin of course and uh, so check them out carpevm and uh, they'll help you make a real professional video for your website, for your marketing presentation, all right? So we thank our sponsors for supporting us. And um, actually, while we were doing the sponsors, uh, apparently, we we're picking random times. It's a random minute uh, created by random.org number generator. And uh, so I was actually right in the middle of our sponsors that we gave away our second uh, free money giveaway. So um, that, uh, that one was brought to you by Mt. Gox mobile app. <laughs> so, uh, see there it is. Uh, it's actually Mt. Gox Live, mtgoxlive.com slash mobile, which is the Mt. Gox mobile app we've been talking about. And um, that free money giveaway was brought to you by the Mt. Gox mobile app. So, uh, there you go. You got some free money. How's that? Boy, we got all that, all that done in one, one little break. So, um, all right. So, back to this. Tablets priced at less than $150 and um, top of the line specs. This is like three generations uh, ahead of something like the Samsung Galaxy Tab that everybody's talking about, right? This is like really, really cutting edge. How, f how much faster is this processor than, than a Samsung Galaxy Tab, for example? How much faster is this processor? Can you hear me? Yes, good. Oh, I said how much, 
like how much faster is this processor and this tablet going to be compared to a Samsung Galaxy tab? Uh, I would say maybe 20-30% probably is a fair estimate. 20 to 30 percent? Yeah. Okay. Wow. That's good. <laughs> All right. I mean, it's really the price that's really compelling about it. The specs isn't too crazy because it is a modified chip of the Cortex 8. You know, it's not, it's not completely new, but they, they hit, they, what they really did is they hit a sweet spot by combining a really fairly cheap but still powerful, you know, CPU with a GPU that's very good. Mm -hmm. So so they, they no longer sacrifice one for the other, and they have this. That's why this chip is is called you know the code name All Winner, right? Mm -hmm. It's All Winner because it has all these. It has, it doesn't cut too many corners, as, and it builds this very round chip that's fairly good for just all these things. And it doesn't. And according to you know online reviews of this this particular prototype, everybody's saying the battery life is also really good, and it's it's an unheard of really good battery life, which means we're looking at like eight to ten hours. On media play, eight to and ten hours on media yeah. play. What is it yeah. in just standby? No, on video. Standby is much longer. What is it like? What would it be on standby? Um, I don't know. I can't. I could give you <laughs> like you know factory advertisement numbers, but I never go with those. No. Well, if it's eight to ten hours on media play, it's yeah, got to be two oh, or like three media, times that. On video. I'm talking about video here. Yeah, it's got to be yeah. like two or three times that. Just if it's just sitting there on standby. Yeah, yeah, just just by sheer estimating like that, yes. Wow. I would say you could probably stand it off like half a week without it losing power. Yeah, that's great. That is really slick. Yeah, totally. Battery has always been a big thing when it comes to these cheaper tablets, because that's what, in my opinion, a lot of people complain about. But mm -hmm. from what I've seen and and just been playing, with this battery is truly impressive. That's like, what's the resolution look like on on the screen? Like compared to I mean, the, the brightness and everything? Honestly, it's like when you, when you hear the numbers, they're not that impressive. But the screen looks much better in person. Yeah. I, I wasn't expecting it to be this nice. <laughs> wow. Amazing. That is cool. So um, now you're, I know you're just getting prototypes arriving now. And it, it, the, these haven't actually officially even been released yet. But you've got um, prototypes coming. Like if if somebody wanted to order one of these from you, can they order? Can they do pre-orders? Are you taking pre-orders? Um, not exactly at the moment because I need to finish. The, I'm I'm really backed up after this presentation because I I attracted a bunch of interesting and people who are like fairly interested at this project. Mm -hmm. And and because it's it's you know three directional and all that, so I want to I want to set up the site, get through with the proposal and stuff. And mm -hmm. hopefully raise some money on Kickstarter to do this correctly, and so I could just start bringing them at become sort of like you know the the local Chinese outlet for these things or right. any other electronic technology that I can simply get contacts for, and uh, you know that will facilitate growth over here right. without the need to pay through a third party because I will be here. Yeah, that's the part I forgot to mention is your Kickstarter. Your you're, you're, you're uh, creating a proposal for Kickstarter, uh, a Kickstarter campaign, I guess they call it, and soon that will be online on Kickstarter, and people can um, donate to this project, which is going to help facilitate, uh, and also there's all, all kinds of rewards and bonuses that they get back um, for doing yeah, that. That's just but, part of, you know, yeah, that's just part of Kickstarter. That's part how of Kickstarter. their, you know, model right. is. Okay, for their, yeah. their business model and stuff. So, but anyway, they can donate to this project, and in, yeah, as and a result... Yeah, I'm also going to obviously open up a Bitcoin donation as well, you know, mm -hmm. so it's not, only, it's not only mainstream U.S. dollars. Yeah, <laughs> dollars and Bitcoins, it's all accepted. Hasn't taken over to that extent yet, but that's what we're trying to do, right? We're trying yeah. to build infrastructure, so when the time comes that people are ready to, to be like, oh, let me just get on this Bitcoin thing, it has to be easy. That's the, that's the whole, like, idea when I talk to everybody about right. Bitcoin. Has to be Fairly, easy. You know, it has to be, it has to be really easy. It has to be like three steps. It has to be less than three steps to get Bitcoin yeah. from you know your money or however that your the method of your purchasing is to get Bitcoin. It has to be less than three steps. That's what I always say. It has to be One, uh, as yeah. easy as grandma's toaster or as easy to use as an elevator. It, it has to be intuitive. Precisely. And yeah. and this is how we get. This is how we get there by giving out these Bitcoin enabled tablets. And by building these Wi-Fi tablets, I mean they're, they're obviously facilitate other things as well. But majorly, Bitcoins would be very beneficial 
what this project has meant for Bitcoin itself. Oh. Yes, exactly. Did um, so we did two, right? And we already announced that. Okay, you did three. Oh, we did the third giveaway. So <laughs> I missed it. Did you? If you weren't watching live, maybe you missed it. But we did the third cash giveaway, uh, Bitcoin cash, that is, and uh, also brought to you by Mt. Gox mobile app. So be sure and check out the Mt. Gox mobile app. It's mtgoxlive.com slash mobile. And um, we just gave the third uh, Bitcoin giveaway. So um, keep that, keep that uh, barcode scanner on the screen. Uh, we're going to do these three times each episode, every, every episode of the Bitcoin show. So you're going to have to watch live. We'll be announcing whatever time it is that we're, we're uh, uh, taping live um, on my Twitter feed, actually. If you go to twitter.com slash Bruce Wagner, all one word, br twitter.com slash Bruce Wagner, and I'll announce when we're going to do the next live taping. And um, you can watch live and then scan the screen with your, uh, with your phone and redeem those codes. Get some free Bitcoins. Anyway. So back to this. Okay, so you're, you're, the Kickstarter campaign, you're going to be able to donate dollars, bitcoins, PayPal, whatever, and uh, to the campaign. And this is going to help facilitate all of this infrastructure building. The whole the um, yeah, totally. There's, there's going to be a site. I'm going to talk more in details about what exactly that needs to be done. Mm -hmm. And the whole thing, like, I, I, like you know, we at Bitcoin has always been very keen on providing transparency to what we do, and we feel that is the right way to do things. So we're going to like. You know, tell you exactly what, what the steps and how we're going to spend this money to do this, as well as to build these tower and just give out information. Mm -hmm. You know, give out information, give out whatever that needs for this thing to facilitate. And we feel that when you when you take money out of the equation, things become a lot easier because you're not trying to you know make a profit that you don't have to worry about return and all right. that. Right. So obviously they're not going to be able to get order these tablets in time for Christmas or anything, but they um, maybe they could give uh, they could give gift cards and say redeemable for one. Uh, is it going to be branded uh, Bitsencom? Is that the brand? Um, it's currently <laughs> it's currently code name under Uplink. Is what? It's currently code name under Uplink. That's what the tablets are called okay. in terms. Okay. Okay, so maybe people can give a gift card at Christmas and say this is a this is redeemable for a tablet when it's ready. But um, I was actually, you know, well, the current plan is to get get all things done ready for the end of the year and launch the Kickstarter at 2012. 2012. Early, like where where early 2012, get mm -hmm. it rolling, and then and then hopefully by Q2 of next year, these tablets will be ready for order from everybody. Mm hmm. And that's how we're going to do it. By then, at the latest. It's a seven inch because tablet. Thing is that you, if you don't do it quick enough, then then, then better pros will come out. Yeah. That's They'll be buying them at, at the drugstore. Yeah. So, well. but th these, with these specs and this price point, you're going to be competing directly with companies like Samsung and Acer and whoever, whoever is. Right. right? And that's the cool part is because they have to make a profit and I don't. And that's why yeah. I'm ultimately going to win because that's. That's what's going to happen. Yeah. And things going to be open source as well, so I'm going to leave everything. Right. So there's no point for, you know, everybody else. That's why everybody's switching to, like, Cyanogen, like, CM7 for, you know, the ROMs on the cloud because open source is better, and, and they, they update quicker, and they get the latest stuff, and they're just as stable as the official one, if not, you know, more mm -hmm. stable. I love and that. the stuff that they don't want. And I feel that that's, it's listening to the people, right, if you're... If you're and this is what your peer is all. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Exactly. They have to make a profit, and I don't. And open source is better. Yeah. This is the this yeah. is the future for sure. Yeah. So people are going to have super super powerful high end tablets. These are basically going to be like I don't know eight hundred dollar tablets that they're going to get for less than one hundred and fifty dollars effectively. Um, That's because because of branding, let's say you'd be saving like three hundred dollars or more. Yeah. Okay. Easily, right? And then. Um, but so for like less than half the price at, at least, um, they'll have a super high-end tablet uh, for less than $150. This is going to be brilliant. You better order a lot of them. <laughs> yeah. Start small, make sure they all work well, work out all the bugs, that's, and then order more and more and more ramp yeah, it up, right? Like we're going to have software team working on this stuff. Mm -hmm. We're going to be testing before they ship like, obviously. Yeah. They're not going to come with whatever factory, you know, Android that comes out of the factory. It's going to be hard. You, you know, I have the option to choose a Bitcoin four inch tablet or a regular tablet that's just customized for better usage, you know, or a full Bitcoin blowing experience, which has all the 
merchant applications or you know all the things that make it really easy and stuff like that. That's what really what we focus on after we secure the you know the tablet and the and the features we're looking at is the contact you manufacturing getting NFC near field communication. We well, feel that's a big you know high need it since everyone else is doing you know digital wallet like Google's doing it, Facebook probably going to start doing it. And they're they're going to be doing it with the next year. Mm -hmm. So we have to either be as good as them or better. Right. That is the way to be. As good or better with near field communications and all these these new technologies, including in the new yeah. versions. This is that's really really exciting. So this is going to be the perfect appliance that people can use for Bitcoin transactions. Um, well, anybody can use it. The customers can use it too, obviously. But the point of sale as well. So it could just it could just be the universal well, Bitcoin sir, tool. It's both for the consumer and the and the producer. And the merchants yeah. and the right exactly. Yeah. So so slick. So I know that in our project where we're going, like I said, we're going to be going door to door in Manhattan, and we're going to be uh, soliciting merchants and trying to convince them of why they should accept Bitcoin. This will be the hardware, um, right. so you know, of choice right now that we can. Yeah, exactly, exactly, exactly. exactly. an awesome. excellent solution. Well, thanks for joining us today. We have to do this again. When, as soon as you have a new announcement, well, as soon as the prototypes come in, right, we can definitely. actually play with it. We'll be doing some demos once I get it. Yeah, then come on in and cool. we can demo it and show it on the camera. That'd be awesome. All right, thanks for the update, Yufu. Thanks for joining us today. All right, we'll do All it right. again. All right, All right, thanks, guys, for joining us. We'll see you next time. I hope you got your free money. If, if nobody claimed it, you can get it on the recorded version. You never know. Maybe people were too slow. They weren't prepared. So anyway, watch us. Every episode, we're going to be giving away free Bitcoins. Ciao. Till next time.